I will open the meeting at 6.03 and now turn it over to Patty. Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight is our reorganization meeting, so I need a nomination for the chair of the school committee. I nominate Elaine Kiss. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Do you take a vote on that, Patty? Um, or do you go through yeah. with all first of them I have first? To say, is there any other nominations? Mm -hmm. Nominations are now closed. Mm -hmm. I will have, actually I will need a motion to do that. I need a motion to close the nominations. Okay. Uh, I'll move to close the nominations. I'll second. You second. PK. <laughs> See how useful I am? <laughs> closed. Okay. So now we need a vote to uh, elect Elaine Chair, Elaine Campbell, uh, Chair of the Conway Grammar uh, School Committee. Wait, did we just do that? No, you, that was Nominate. to close the nominations. Now we're going to vote. Oh, yep. okay. oh, good. Yes, yes. All in favor? Aye, aye. aye. Thank you. Okay, and now we go back to now Elaine and you okay. do the rest of them. Great. So I need nominations for my vice chair. Nominations are open. I'll nominate Ira. <coughs> You're the chairman of vice. Okay, I'll be the chairman of vice. Okay. Okay. Can I get a second? I'll Any second others? Yeah. Okay. Maybe next time. Okay. okay. Next, next year. year. Next year. Yeah. All right. Okay. So mm -hmm. close nominations. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. And can we have a vote on uh, Ira as vice chair? Yes. All in favor? <coughs> All right. Okay. Now we need nominations for secretary. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Michael. Nominate there you Michael. go. Right. I nominate Michael. Okay. Any other nominations? Close nominations. Can I have a vote for Michael as chair? I mean, yes. as uh, secretary? Yes. In Aye. favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Uh, and then the rest are um, your are your appointments. Okay. The commit the. Well, let's put. Well, we have Frontier, right? He's currently Phil Camper. Do you still have time for that? Okay. Anybody else mm -hmm. want it? You sure you have time? Okay. Bill, it is. All right. Okay. Um, collaborative representative. Collaborative. I think Ashley's just getting the hang of it, so I'll put Ashley back unless she doesn't want to do it. Okay. Uh, Union 38 representatives. So, me. You, right? Yeah, and Laura Bross it, yeah. and Michael. Okay. Could you could so could you be Union Thirty Eight while you're Frontier? <coughs> yeah. Good. So now we're back to our regular agenda. I need to bring up on my iPad. Right. Okay. Yep. Internet. Anybody have a hard copy I could have? Um, I do, and I can. Um, well, I have it sort of written out. Oh, yeah, Donna gives me cheat sheets, so there you go. You just give it a whole packet. I'll keep it together so then she can get it back, and then I can put it back in the packet for Donna. I didn't need a copy of your principal. Oh, yeah. Sorry. All right. Uh, can I can review and approve minutes May 17, 2018, and executive session minutes of November? Can we do them in, in, two, in two, two votes? Yeah. And so I need a motion for the minutes of May 17th. A motion that we approve the minutes from the 17th. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Now on the minutes from the executive session. I don't remember what it was about. The only thing that we did in that executive session was approve executive session minutes? Probably. Yes. It was. Okay. Yes. Can I get a motion to approve the executive committee minutes? Yes. Second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who seconded? I'm sorry. I seconded Michael. it. Okay. All right. So that was done. And you can want to give them back to Patty yes, now? Yes, I need to take them back and 
dispose of them. There's nothing in this. I know, but that, I guess it's all done as a procedure. It's, it makes life easier. Okay. Keep, keep this ready. Really? Financial statement. Okay. Warrants are being signed. So you have uh, eight warrants that total 40000 158.56. Um, so right now, um, with estimating the June invoices that'll trickle in, um, and we just uh, we just authorized uh, Scott Paul to upgrade some wireless devices. We had to do it by tomorrow. They're running a deal, so we're spending $5,500 on wireless devices, um, like iPads. I mean, is that what he meant? Um, well, the wireless uh, access points, one thing, and then um, Chromebooks for Chromebooks, fourth okay. grade and fifth grade are sharing Chromebooks. So we had some money left, so we're going to do Chromebooks for fourth grade, nice. and then they each grade will have. It's outstanding. And sixth grade already has them. And yeah. So uh, I just want. So before I get to the final number, I just want to report through May, um, our lunch program is a deficit of three thousand six sixty-seven twenty. And at this time last year, we were in a deficit of 63.82.81, so we've almost cut it in half. That's good. Um, and right now, our uncollected balances is $1,500, and it was close to four wow. around this time last year. Kudos, so, Principal Gordon. And, awesome. and, and the Meals Plus system um, is keeping much more accurate records, so this was, I think, a great investment. Um, Paying so, for itself. So we're gonna we are gonna have to cover those two. So right now it looks like we might have about forty two thousand dollars left in our budget that um, Principal uh, Kristen can spend down. Or what the other thing we can do is I can take some salaries off school choice and put them on here. Um, we've been trying to keep away from doing any more maintenance projects because Bob is still trying to finish some FY17 projects so we don't want to do any more building projects. I think the only thing left we have here is the hand dryers which I think are going to happen this summer um, but he's going to have a, a roof pro uh, finishing the roof project at um, Frontier and he's got some projects go still going at Deerfield so we are trying to focus this year's money on technology. Okay. Did uh, the, all the stuff with the well is all done? We have to, the water tank this summer is going to be, the liner is going to be replaced. Okay. So we actually, actually, the well's done, but we have to close the school down for a week in August um, because they're going in and replacing the liner and that water tank is in the, it's, it's like in concrete, how, you could never get that thing out. We better, but you the can't get it out. For that, right? Um, it came out of cap. It came out of grammar school capital stabilization. Yeah. Yeah. But at a town meeting, it went through it. So thirds vote. Yes, the well well's done, but we're going to replace the line and the water tank. Can I add something okay. real quick? Yeah. I highly suggest if anyone wants to to go look at the well it's crazy. and look at the hole. A person has to climb in there this summer to replace it. It's mm. it's ridiculous. scary. It is. It's like this big, and a guy has to get in there and power wash it. It's mm. ridiculous. highly entertaining. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So the only reason I'm recommending possibly freeing up some money in school choice is that we might have a student that we are going to need some funds uh, for to address the special needs of this child. Um, so that it would be, we'd be able, if that comes to fruition, we'd have the money sitting in school choice to be able to take care of those needs next year once it's decided. It is not yet decided whether we're going to maintain him here at Conway or if he's going to go to um, a sister program in one of our sister union schools. Well, but, but I do want to add that either way, the money is needed. To maintain that Conway, Correct. that money will be needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm so suggesting I take some. I, 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 do, I try to relieve the school choice fund of the forty-two thousand by charging them to this to this budget. Mm -hmm. Can I ask uh, Principal Gordon? Do you uh, agree with all of these suggestions? Is this, yeah. Is this, this, would, would this how you be how you would do it if you were alone on the island? Yes. <laughs> this is. Um, th yeah. This would be yes. Okay. This is, thank you for asking. Phil. Are the intercoms up and running? They are. Yeah. Everything's up and running. And they work. Mm -hmm. just Everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Ashley, the intercoms are working. Everywhere, Ash. Everywhere. And we have wireless microphones in the auditorium. That's awesome. 
So is the, the curtains being replaced at any point? Yes, yeah, so the one curtain was replaced, um, and then we had to take down the other curtain because of when the fire marshal came through, we couldn't find the, the right, right. So we had to take that down. So we need to do we need money for the one curtain is kind of yeah. We we are going to need money for the curtain. Yeah. And I did just look. We can only I've only got twelve thousand dollars left to move out of pay, out of um, school choice payroll, unless the town would let me do a journal entry, which mm -hmm. I don't think they will. I couldn't understand. You I'm sorry. Uh, we only uh, th there's only about twelve thousand dollars remaining in school choice payroll to be paid out. I forget none of our teachers come out of there. So of the forty two, I could only save twelve in our school choice unless the town would allow me to do a journal entry to journal it out and I don't know that they would do that. We've never made that request before. Mm. Yeah, because they love doing new things like that. Well, but, but again, we're talking about a, a child that we was when we were doing the budget, we were unaware of the needs, the level of service, and now that we are, so we're trying to be proactive. And so what's the procedure or process to get a approval for a journal entry uh, change? Thing? I don't know because we've I've never done it in my six mm -hmm. years here. I don't know if um, if it's just asking the treasurer to reclassify, um, uh, you know, to have the town administrator approve it or if it, the select board needs to approve it. Do we know how much other additional funds we need to support this kid? We need about forty-five thousand dollars, and that's for like, PT or OT or speech therapy. It would be either sending him to a, uh, the tuition to send him to a sister program in one of the union schools, or hiring um, uh, an instructional assistant and possibly a teacher to maintain him here. Mm -hmm. It's a Conway kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, it doesn't look like there's a sister school opening. Um, yeah. So it looks more than likely we can't maintain them. But well, it's part of it's an age issue. Uh, age inappropriate for. Yeah. Yeah. Too big of an age gap for the children. All oh, right. Mm -hmm. Well, then it sounds like you're going to have to find out how you go about doing this and do it. Okay, I will do I that. Mean, but yeah. A, that's just. Mm -hmm. That sounds like that's the educationally sound thing to do. Well, there was gonna. So does that mean that all the kids in wings are of are mostly the youngest and the oldest have to be within a certain age range to be in the class together? So can we find another kid to put in wings to make? No, you can't. It's it's a forty eight month. month. It's a forty eight month um, span. A, span, and um, we do have ch two children that fall a little bit out of that, and so when they're in certain spaces, certain times, you, you have to really craft that very well. But the ch this child is um, no, not even close to being, that being within that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so wouldn't that kid then be going to Frontier? Little. Uh, little pumpkin. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be an ongoing Mm. So that until, 45 is until it's age appropriate, until the age is appropriate for that for wings. Wing yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we might as well try it. Okay. So do we want to take a motion or do you just want to recommend that I do that? No, I recommend that you do it. Okay. We recommend that you do it. Okay. And I will send an email out. Um, I'll, I'll start with Jim Warner and I'll go from there. Yep. Anything else with financial statements? Not unless anybody has any questions. The salary items in the um, can you go through some of the items that are significantly over? Mm -hmm. oh, actually, you wanted to get out of here soon. Mm -hmm. yes. it, it, it's Just the go over the worst oh, boos. Yeah, yeah. Okay, like like what? Though? We're the ones where the percentage <laughs> over is is double digits. Well, okay, so if you look on page two, you'll see that. Um, it looks like on um, salary line where it says teacher specialist 2310 that were over 28 806 94 but look right above it there were positive 28 so those two negate each other we're just charging something on the wrong line and I have to do a reclass entry um, most of our some of our savings is in um, unused um, professional development from our, our staff 
Um, other monies, we still have $7,200 or $7,300 in textbooks that w was not unspent. Uh, general supplies, we have about $4,900 there. Um, our hardware and devices, we still have the $11,000, and that's why we're going to do the $5,500 expenditure. Mm -hmm. Um, the regional transportation, um, that number, are, we have some savings because of the fuel adjustment clause, but it's offsetting the overage in the sped transportation. Um, Wasn't there something on the news about us getting more money for transportation? We just we got a letter. Yeah, we don't get any money for transportation because we're not the frontier. Mm -hmm. Article 318, the yeah. Amendment 318, I wrote that Which letter. Which we get, we're getting some money, Adam Hines, that, Adam Hines. That's a slight, that's a separate thing, mm -hmm. but... Yeah. We don't get any money for transportation in Conway. We get it for Frontier. Right. Oh, so, okay. but the the another thing that um, what's the letter I got today? Right. So the um, Adam Hines successfully got a, an amendment into this. So he's our senator, state senator. He got an amendment into the state budget called Article Three Eighteen. The the total price to the state is only one and a half million dollars a year, but it would give it, it's it's special rural school aid to districts based on. Uh, the size of the town, um, and it's a ratio of students to size of town. So Conway would be one of those first, we would be getting an extra $100 a year per student. Um, so which is $11,000 11, $11, a year. And if it, as, if it goes in there, um, it would become like a permanent part. It would never need to be voted on specially again. It would be like a permanent thing. And Frontier would also qualify, and Frontier would also get it. So it would be sixty something thousand for Frontier and twelve thousand for yeah, Conway, that helps. which is, which when when our assessment request is like an extra sixty grand from the town every year, twelve grand is a big deal. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah. So if anybody knows Kul so K Kulik is the guy. He's he's in the House um, uh, reconcil Budget Reconciliation Committee. And he's the one with a lot of juice to make this happen. So we're trying to get people to call Kulik. Oh, so he did it already? or has Hines it got it in the Senate budget. The House is now taking the summer to do their reconciliation and conference to oh, see what okay. their budget looks like. But we are told because of the low overall price tag, it's got a real shot at happening. Okay. Um, any other questions for Patty? Um, um, it may be relevant. I, I did go up to Tony Borden's property, and I was mistaken. His driveway is I went up not too. Yeah. Yeah. It is not. There's no place There's that up tree there. there. Right. Yeah, I, I just so. drove up yeah. the other I thought it was a much wider space, no. so, yeah. Yeah, so that's, I, I it's not on my report book. Right. We need to. Ruled out. I know, what do we, so, mm -hmm. we're talking about the Burt address. So they can't get a bus up there. Yes, without it, it, so w the only thing that we would be able to do is send a, a car up there, but that's going to add to mm -hmm. to the transportation budget. We don't have that. We don't have it budgeted. Um, mm -hmm. That would be the problem. Is there any? I mean, is there any way to work with them? Like we could send it for the grammar school kids, but not the. Frontier kid, or like, could some of it somehow be negotiated? Yeah, yeah, they're definitely. Because uh, um, now they're going to have two different time frames. Right. With they're definitely willing to work with us, without a doubt. That? They're lovely. Are we talking about family? The family yeah. or Gripco? The family. The family. Okay. Yeah, they're really lovely. Because um, they're all, there's going to be three of them in the elementary, and one's moving up to Frontier. So we would have to send two different times a right, day, yeah. whereas if maybe they could manage the frontier one, yeah. we yeah. could do something with the elementary school What kids. is the distance from their house to the bottom of the street where they could it's, pick up the it's bus? It's a mile straight uphill. There's, there's no sidewalk. There's It's curvy. I drove, I went up the other day. It's uphill it's in curvy. both directions. It's a, The little guy would never be able to make it up and down no. the hill. Never. I was thinking more for the older children. Nope, I wouldn't send, I wouldn't, do you know, you know how curvy it yeah. is? Yeah. Like, you're going well, around, you wouldn't well. see a kid coming, and there's no way no, you would see Especially that narrow part, yeah. and it's steep. Yeah. Um, I will call them. I think that, um, I think that, uh, 
they wanted to bring it to your attention. They yeah. wanted to know you to know that there's kids well, up there. That and I, I may have asked this before, but what are we legal? Are we legally required to do curbside pickup, drop off? Are we legally? You're legally required to transport them, and it, this, the the bus stop has to be in a safe place. And they would win an argument that mm -hmm. it's not in a safe place. Right. We we don't. Yeah, there are there are. Um, we are not required to do door to door. Okay, but um, in since my experience here, everybody's so rural, it's and there's no sidewalks anywhere. There's no place to make a bus stop. So uh, when I go, I've gone out and I've actually I followed one entire route and I swear God I was going to be lost because then my GPS caught up. Yeah, and I'm like, I will never GPS find, doesn't work. I'm up like, your I will never find my way out of Conway again. And I'm like, I'm looking at, at at the side of my car, going, I don't know how a bus does this because oh, I'm, yeah. nausea I'm nauseous doing this. So. Um, I understand You're that, such a city that, girl. that I am. I'm used to guardrails. <laughs> Shocker. Um, oh gosh. And sidewalks. And sidewalks. And and nobody and street nobody where I come from gets door to door service. We have no street lights. Yeah. Light. No street lights either. Right. Um, so no. So just think in the right. in the dark months. Yes. You know so those kids are getting off the bus. At, you know, well, Marty and I used to go out. Marty Barrett used to come with me when we would get calls, and because Sunderland, there's areas of Sunderland that are the same way, and we've got to make they're flat. We've got to make the, the special accommodations. Um, and again, it, the only thing at this point would be um, Mr. Gripko would have to send up a smaller vehicle, which we do in Deerfield because we can't get up a hill where there's a certain school up there and there's a lot of kids that live up in the area at one yeah. of the private schools so we have to send cars up to get them yeah um so but again that's not budgeted but i'm sure we could find you know if we could find some budget savings yeah um i mean the only thing i don't get is why he can't the bus can't go up 116 north poland and then come down that way to pick them up I've been over this with Lenny, I think, three times. And he's been, he's really, he's, right. I, don't I know some Lenny people haven't had good luck with I don't him. think he's Lenny wants to navigate a 70-passenger bus on that road. Yeah. Because he gets stuck and then, oh. especially in the I winter. Know. I mean, there's worse roads than that in terms of it, that, you know, a good part of that's paved now. They mm -hmm. did a big paving, uh, but, you know. It's only up around the, if you, do you know North Poland? I didn't, I want to, I just went up the street looking at the driveways and yeah. things. So and if you don't turn is. there, if you go further up yeah. 116, the next left pretty much is North Poland, yeah. which I know we have kids on. Will we come out that way, I think, because that's the route I was following. So you go up North Poland, at the end of North Poland, there's a T, you take a left, I went, you, I and would you go, go right there past was like their driveway. There's like a little bridge, and then you go up, and then you take a left, and I swooped around and came back out to 116. Yes. And then they take a left and do a turnaround and come back down the yeah. 116. Yeah, so I think he turns around now at, at the top of North Poland. Yeah, he takes a left and they I turn mean, up there. I we set the bus route, so... Um, well, but I don't know why he can't turn do, left and come down <coughs> Poland. We do set the best routes, but we rely on Leonard, who's his own these streets. I don't know these streets. He knows these no. streets. I don't no. know these streets. No. So, is it feasible? I mean, then he has to go through the Poland Gap is the issue, right. which is, yeah. you know, so. which you probably didn't see, but it's a narrow. Gate. So Poland why don't Gate. Kristen right. and I sides. set up a meeting with uh, Mr. Gripko and get, and have him tell us exactly why. We can't send the bus up that way, and then what yeah. the feasible, you know. Um, I talked to him several times, and he said we can't. You know, there's there's not a turnaround place, and I went and looked, well, and there's not. This a wouldn't be a loop. Place. This would be a loop, not a turnaround. Yeah. So Elaine, you're um, you're you're recommending a, a North Poland loop from North Poland. Yep. To Maine, Poland. And what I, what I was thinking is that you know if there is a if that's not feasible if there's a quote that for the passenger for the passenger van that yeah, Ripco gives to us one. can can 
and, and can we send a letter? Can you send a letter to the family saying we're not obligated to provide this for you, but if you want to pay for it, here's no, the. No, we, we, we are obligated. We are obligated. We are obligated. We just the passenger we're, not, yeah. we're not obligated door to door if we have a safe bus stop, no, but otherwise stop. we're obligated to oh. get the kids to. No, we're, we're going to spend forty five grand on one kid, which mm -hmm. I am totally in support of. Then we have to find a way it's not to one get kid, these four. three kids. No. About to get these three kids oh, to yeah. school, yeah, and like, there will be a, another use for this feed, like a feeder bus One's or a smaller bus at one point. Elementary but is the youngest one. In, uh, I agree. We have to get these kids to school. Is there has to be a smaller bus or a way to do it. Right. But there is a Which way to do here. it. One's going into um, one will be going into sixth grade. Ian's going into frontier. Frontier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it feasible to? Um, this might be too out of the box. Yeah, the little guys. Is it possible oh, to find a town vehicle or a civilian? I'm sorry. Oh, and insure a vehicle and have someone certified from Conway to get these kids in a town vehicle <laughs> or a civilian's vehicle, what would a liability package look like to do that? Yeah, probably right. way more than you'd want to would, it, would, it, would it be question. more, would it be more than $45,000? Uber. Yeah, so we had one of the principals um, Uber. We have to Corey and fingerprint the Uber driver. We, ha we, ha mm -hmm. right. we have to be the same Uber driver every day. Mm -hmm. We, they'd have to be coried and fingerprinted. Mm -hmm. We had Russ investigate um, parent drivers because we do have a school yeah. that was using parent drivers for mm -hmm. a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Here, and so Russ, it. not here, in your no, district. Uh, yeah, in the district. And so there, Russ gave um, the principal, who then brought it to a principal's meeting, all the things that would need to be filled out um, mm -hmm. in order for a parent to drive, like sure insurance coverage yep. and all this stuff. So then, um, but they're taking the risk, and but, you, but you want us to assume their risk in that. And I don't I know how we would do that. I just wanted to finish this. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, so the principal brought this information to the principal's meeting, and then I've been helping out at one of the schools, doing you know some work at one of the schools, and it happened to be one of the schools. It happened to be the school where they were mm -hmm. using a lot of parent drivers. I was really uncomfortable with that because mm -hmm. I never have used parent drivers yeah, in my that's career. Very risky. So I called the school attorney and I said, listen, I know you gave us this information, but I want to talk to you personally about it. Yeah. And he said, I gave you the information, but until the district has a um, policy, policy, I do not mm -hmm. agree that you should do this. Right. So right. That's where he's, he, that's where he stood. Mm -hmm. And they were doing it without that authorization? Without so waivers, yeah. Without so signing the waivers. Yeah. We used to do driving it here. other people's children. We, so there we, we, we drove. We did parent drive to uh, field trips to um. I mean to to the uh, to the junior Olympics or step up day. Or no, we went down the at Conway Grammar School. We went down to uh, the Paul, was it the Paul Tuck? Uh, uh, shoot. The we, zoo. We, yeah, the zoo. In uh, Rhode Island? Island? Yeah. Probably oh, we zoo. take a bus now. We went to the zoo with, in, a, in a parent convoy. Um, was we, this we daily went, transportation that was going on with parent drivers? Field mm -hmm. trips. Yeah, uh, and, and they wanted parents with the biggest vehicles so they could stick the most number of kids in. Yeah, they did. We have We did that a couple years ago. Drivers. When Cooper was in preschool, we went on a field trip when I drove. Right, but what we're saying is if God forbid you got in an right. accident, all that liability is on you. The school would have no liability. So and we don't want, we shouldn't be putting our parents in that position to assume that risk. Is the town, would the town consider an insurance policy, the town, to transport kids, having Corey checked, or whatever all the administrative hoops are that would satisfy Russ and the state education department? That's my question. Yeah. So like it's out of the box. But would, it, would it be half the price out of the box? But I the problem is we are contracted with, with Gribco. It has to be contracted with we Gribco? We are contracted with Gribco. It's a closed, it's a closed shop? And remember, we, that's kind of a, yep. and a few we don't years really back, a few want years back. that to change. Is that a contract that has a time limit? The contract is running out. We are going to um, be going out to bid again next year. And um, mm -hmm. in September, it will be on the agenda for us not to participate in the Franklin County uh, mm -hmm. transportation bid because there is no opt-out clause this year, mm -hmm. which means um, we all, we and Mahar always opt out because we get better pricing from our local vendor and they have a, loc a small yeah. local vendor 
And the last time we went out to bid, the difference between Mr. Gripko and the Kosmeskis was extraordinary. It was it, right. it, and they do great work for us, but something like this, I mean... Well, again, we'd have to approach Mr. Gripko and right. have that conversation. Right. But right he now would, we don't but, have a fresh but he, egg. But he would want to... It would be... a. <laughs> Unfortunately, it would be the per day bus cost, regardless of if it was a 70 passenger bus oh, or a, a smaller vehicle. I wonder if someone from our finance committee in Conway would be willing to do the research, you know, in, 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 a, in a collaborative spirit of collaboration to save the town money. And it might be like, nope, it's not going to work, it's too risky, there's an insurance packages and court. but. It probably could be figured out in a matter of days right, and phone but calls. But Ripco gets first dibs uh, until this contract lapse or a discussion. We're always going to have it with Gripco because yeah. there's the, no competitor I, that's not double. I do want to say that I, I did ask I did ask the Furcarg people mm -hmm. when I was at a meeting with them last week. I asked the Furcarg people about this, mm -hmm. um, about why we why the next contract schools aren't going to be able to opt out. And they maintain that because schools won't be opting out, the prices that they receive will be much lower than last contract because the buses will have certainty, da da da, and whatever. It didn't. We the math didn't really so sound. It didn't. That sounded kind of sketchy. But that, that's. They believe that by doing that, it's, uh, a, little, it's a little. It was a little bit different. We don't get as many bidders to come to the table with the opt-outs because they're not going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So if there's no opt-outs, there's more people that might come in to compete. Yeah. I mean, this is a situation that's making us ask these questions, I and it's a real expensive problem, right? Yes. So, is it is it fait accompli? Well, I that, think the you know, better solution mm -hmm. is to send a smaller bus to do the whole route. Mm -hmm. But then, what, to what are we going to do if you're saying send one and the kids at Frontier need to be there by? So they all get in the car at the same time, they all drive down to Frontier and then we come back and drop off the kids at Conway Grammar School? So they all leave at the same time? No, I'm saying the whole route engage a smaller bus that can do he that route. He doesn't have smaller yeah. buses and when I did, oh, I, I, thought I, he did. I had, I had um, another school committee inquire if um, for the next bid if Mr. Gripko yeah. would consider buying smaller than <laughs> 70 passenger buses yeah. and he said it's not it's, it doesn't make, it's not cost effective for him to do that. Mm -hmm. the, so if the town buys him a bus, it would be cheaper than... No, see, and this, I, I didn't want to bring this, so I, I don't know how many years ago when Mike Kirkulotis got, got, was into this issue, mm -hmm. be, and he got, uh, I think, two or three buses donated for free, and his idea was start your own, our own town transportation company that with free buses, we'd have to be able to do better than Gripco could. And uh, he actually spent a considerable amount of time and effort on this issue, and the numbers never worked out and mm -hmm. um, for a whole lot of different reasons, but it would... Uh, so what, what happens when this kid becomes, when their oldest becomes a teenager, the town is going to pay mileage for We'll buy him a them. car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's what happened, because I went to Smith Volk, I know all about it, because the town paid for me to drive myself to school. So, so all I did... Wow. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. So it would be cheaper just to buy them a bus because when, when they're oldest... But if can you buy drive them a bus and it's a regular route, you have to register it as a school vehicle, you have to have a 7B licensing, and you have to have a driver that's a registered bus driver. Well, he can find the driver. We'll just drop off the bus. Is that possible? Yeah. Would that be cheaper than billing this out four years in a row? Probably. Potentially. I, well... He can't find bus driver, so I don't know how the con town of Conway is going to find their own bus driver. I think that's going to be, and then you get the, you you're going to have benefits, and you're going to have all the regulations of the registry for mm -hmm. having a, 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 a your own school bus. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we could invite Lenny to a school committee meeting. Yeah, because there's none between you now and September. We, right, we need this family to have a decision mm -hmm. right. by the time so, school uh, starts. In what September. I would like to do is set up a meeting with with, with Mr. Gripko. Kristen and myself, okay. and, and, and figure and get I'll this figured out. I'll come if I can if you let me know when it is. Okay. Just because I know the road. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That, yeah. And you know, determine the cost per year, and how many years uh, what that will be responsible for. 
And that's what, the, what if we paid the why can't why can't we pay the Burton family like Ashley got paid? Why can't we pay oh, the Burton family sure. mileage like, yeah, to, to transport their kids you, themselves? You know what? They work. Sure, sure. You know what? They would yeah, they would transport their kids for free if it wasn't an issue. They you know what I mean? They're not looking for right. money. Yeah. I want to make that clear. No, I'm they're not having they're looking for money, but I'm saying why don't we they, use that same Because they're having they're having they're having an issue but like they wouldn't be asking if yeah, they work. They work. They work, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, so they can't, you know, sometimes kids grandma get has a certain age, get, right, the kids right. are old enough, they right. could actually get off the bus right. and look after the younger one right. and whatever right. and right. not have to be met but at then the bus stop if a mile you think away. About, but if you think about it this way, so if we send up the car, we'd have to take them all because you can't take the oldest one who needs to be at school first and leave the three little ones at home alone, who the well, oldest one's probably watching. Two, one will be going to Frontier and two here. Right. And three here. Two here. I think it's that two here. Part, two. Two. Okay, but what I'm saying is, it, to, in order to make it, we we would have, we'd have. Ha, are we no, making the next it one trip or two trips? Right, it's two trips. It's, it's four trips a day. It's an interesting right. problem that makes us question our current arrangements. But there's right. an hour in between, so it's yeah. right. So it could right. Be so what I'm saying is, we would pick up all three children at the same time. They'd all take a ride to Frontier. The Frontier child would get out, and the other two would get a ride up to the Conway Grammar School. They'd be here too early. They'd be here way too early? Yeah. 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 No, the person's going to take the older one down and turn around and go back, go back and, and get the younger ones and, and bring them down. Really <laughs> and we can get a price quote, but that's going to be costly. Okay. Perhaps we But it's just, yeah. it's not a problem that's going to go away. Like, there's, there's houses that a 70 passenger bus can't get to that would be potentially moved in by a preschool. Well, she's been doing this right. for a long time. Right. And there's I mean, Ian just graduated right. from the sixth grade. My family mean, does it. I have to drive my kids three quarters of a mile. I think that there's a risk you take when you move <laughs> to a rural community. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just a reality for us, too. The bus mm -hmm. does not go to the mailboxes for our for my kids um, between December and April. Right. We, we have can't to drive them to the horse barn or the Kirk mm -hmm. it's, it's the same problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's tough. It's mine, where, it's where mine we choose comes to, to the live. mailbox. It's where we choose to live. Yeah. yeah. All right. Maybe we've exhausted ideas and options. Well, we but can talk with our right yeah. yeah. totally. I'd like to know what but it's going to cost mean, for I the know. length of time we're right. responsible to do it, and and does that demand? Well, that's going to go out thinking. years. I mean, if there's two oh, still yeah. here, yeah, yeah. there's a, a preschool. <laughs> he's, he's not going to be able to forecast for you, but yeah. the prices are because mm -hmm. he, he doesn't know when he's going to re, you know. Right. Well, you know they're not going to go down. You can at least forecast Correct. this amount for four years. One four. One four. Um, yeah. Elaine, what would be a good waiting time for you? First thing. Uh, what's first thing for you? Anywhere between. 7.30 and then, I mean, I can, some mornings I can do 9 if you can he, do 9. He's driving at that time. Well, he'll be, <sighs> he'll be free by Four. 9 probably. The last elementary school yeah. is. Okay, so we'll try to do 9 o'clock as soon as he's. Yeah, because yeah, I usually call him between 10 and 12 and yeah. then and they, and I can't get him until after 4. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that. We could even. Talk to him on speakerphone if need be, maybe. Yeah. Oh, we could make you yeah. dial you in. Yep. Whatever you need. Yeah. Okay. okay. All so right. We will do that. Where did we go? We finished financial statements, public comment. Are you a public? Will you accept public question? All right, cool. Two part then. Uh, yeah. Last month, you guys created, uh, voted to approve a new position in the school, cafeteria team leader. Yep. First question uh, Who has the final authority to either hire or appoint that position? Second part, when do we think that position will be either appointed or hired? So we don't have a responsibility to answer, but I can. Sure. Yes. If you'd like to I would like Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the person already exists in the system, mm -hmm. and it's Jeannie. Mm -hmm. And the school committee um, just approved that you guys, I wasn't here last month, so I yeah. don't know. I thought the vote was on for this month. So her uh, uh, a new rate will be effective retro back to January 1st, and she should be getting that adjustment in the next check or the last check of the year? Well, ma'am, they, they voted to approve the position last month, cool. but there was no vote on the financial aspect of it last month. The, on the pay schedule. Uh, the highest was pay, that one the highest okay. pay schedule. It's established. Okay. The highest pay schedule is $17.65, and the person in the current position, position. Is, is put that? on that step okay. because of her years of service with okay. the district. Got it. All right, thank you. Yes. 
So that is, and that's kind of what we were hoping for mm -hmm. when we have issue, had the stuff in the in the fall with reduction in hours and whatever is letting this all kind of shake out and land where it did. And it was actually nice that it kind of landed how it did. Uh, one more question then. Uh, since this is a retroactive thing, does that mean come July 1st, uh, that individual will get their COLA no. increase? No. As, no, that was the agreement that we would adjust them in January, but then they, that would be their thing all the way through FY19. So they will not be up for another raise until, until July 1, 2019? Yes. Okay. Correct. That was an inside baseball question. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Mm -hmm. I know more about this lunch program than I could care to bring. Yeah, it's impressive. Awesome. And had I known you guys voted last month, she would have already gotten her letter. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Anything else? No, nope, that's it. Okay. Um, unfinished business. business. Um, non salary recommendations. Non union. Salary. Non, non, <laughs> non union. Non salary would be called volunteer, right? Okay. So they're in here somewhere. Is there only one? There's two. There should be two uh, salary schedules that were handed out last month. One is the Conway non-union people, and the other is the administrative offices at uh, central office. I thought we voted on that too. Did I thought, well? I you did too. Actually, we did vote on that. Okay. So I wasn't <laughs> two, again. Two, 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 I two. wasn't here. It was two percent across the board with that one. With one exception at Conway and one exception at the at the. Okay, she's got it on here. Um, okay. So there was two. There was two, everyone was two percent, with the exception of the team leader, and there was a an exception on the administrative side. Um, we are per our um, te uh, tech director uh, wanted our tech support uh, adjusted to um, the same salary range as other districts. Yep. So um, he's going to go from an hourly wage to a, a salary. Okay. I think we did vote this, but we'll vote it again. So can I have a motion to approve the non-union salary recommendations yes. made? Okay. Phil makes a motion. I'll second. Michael second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that good for both? All? Mm -hmm. Okay. Various policy changes and additions that we did postpone. No, yes. these are new ones. <laughs> oh, okay. New ones and the ones you old ones. Home. Yes. Um, so I'm I'm on that committee. If anybody has any questions um, about most of it is technical language, yeah, correct, the, and what, bringing it up to and and it was also a chance for the administra for additional administrators uh, to look at it and to uh, have request language changes that more accurately reflect current practices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Were there any? Okay, so unfinished business is discussion and vote on amend amendments to or adoptions of the following policies as rec recommended. I can't read tonight. <laughs> MASC and as recommended by the Frontier Regional Policy Review Subcommittee. So, do you want me to read the policies, Patty? Uh, I don't think you need to. You can say as listed. <laughs> okay, as Thank listed. You. Thank you. That was the right answer. <laughs> for the ones that are unfinished business for Conway, can I get a motion to approve those policies? Michael gives us a motion. motion. Second. Okay. Ashley, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then the new business is for all school committees, discussion only on amendments to or adoption of the following policies as re recommended by the MASC and recommended by the Frontier Regional Policy Review Committee. This is first read only and when the vote held. Yes, yeah, she, she cut and held pasted from June. last month. So that's, that's a non-discrimination policy, a wellness okay. policy, conduct, conduct of school. Conduct of school the council business and first aid. There's a whole page right. of policies. So we're, 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 okay, so this is deja vu again. So this first bit we voted on last time. We didn't vote. We no, postponed. We, oh, we postponed. We okay, decided so to do them all this, together. This was provided to us before, and I've got um, nothing yeah. under my business. And uh, she just yeah. cut and paid. So, oh, so we should vote. We should vote on these. We, they were already read in. Mr. Chair. We, Okay. Um, I think you're looking at an, uh, under new business right. on the revised agenda. There is no new business. Yeah. Oh, well, there okay. Was a right. I don't think we voted. Um, 
these policies, though, that no. it says we, are up for June. The second, at the last the, meeting, the second we, group. Yeah, there were just like a handful so that were still being finished. Then, I then can then give those it to you. we're going to need to list okay. out. There's two pages of them. Okay, second group. Second group. Can I get a motion to? Motion. Bill, motion to adopt this policies that are two, three pages long. So <laughs> you just give me those, right? Mm -hmm. Second, Ira, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That's because we have, oh, there's one on head lice. I hope everybody read that one. I, I mean, I, having looked through all of them, I really want to thank the policy committee for all the work that they did. It's because it's really like change of word here. And we and did, we really did not follow mask. We we did, yeah. we went out and just made things better. Like I thought on on many occasions. It was, it was clear that you did a lot of detailed work on the language. So I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Um. Can so. Look at, can you look at the so we are on to reports. Capital projects. Is that a report? I, I have nothing except that I know that the only thing left from the uh, warrant article that we had left from the previous year is the hand dryers, which is going to happen this summer. Is that your understanding, mm -hmm. Principal Gordon? And I'm not sure we, we've had an update of that capital projects list. Everything's been done on it except uh, one, we were going to do one floor. I don't know if the thought of was per year or whatever classroom floor. So that will be done this summer and then the hand dryers. Okay. Everything else has been done. So no paint jobs or? That, that was on we that didn't list. ask to withdraw any money this year. Okay. Yeah, that was last year's so. right. But I thought we got lucky that nobody brought this stuff up at town meeting. That that it, it was taking us so long to get to get that list completed when it was presented at that previous town meeting as urgent and necessary immediately. And well, not all the I, items. So, you, so some of them were, but so and, when, and they so went a long were. time without being done. But but what happens is when we look at five schools, we have to prioritize five schools. So the roof, a leaking roof, takes precedence over replacing hand dryers. Yeah. Promises to voters at the floor town meeting take precedent. Although well, then you need to hire a lot more people in the maintenance department. Well, right. It was never brought. Uh, you know, and you know, an intercom uh, I, I totally, big I totally issue, agree that, that Bob Lesko is really jammed up. I totally agree with that. But um, we it's a lot of a lot of projects to cover mm -hmm. with yep. schools. That well, it took aging. us a year to get intercom. So uh, I would say that. We were trying to do the intercoms because all the schools needed them, so we were trying to do them all together to see if we could get the best price. But then we found out there were different systems with different components, and then we had to break them apart again. So, right. But and, there's, and there's bidding laws and procurement laws that we have to go through, which also hold up the process because you have to, right. uh, you know, depending on the dollar amount of the project, you have to get three, you know, you can use sound business practices, or you can get three quotes, or you have to go out to bid. So it's not just yeah. you say fix it and we yeah. go do no, it the we, next day. we get that. I've been doing this long enough. Oh, we, do. we get that. Uh, committee chair, I don't have a report. Um, the collaborative, anything happening down there in Northampton? Hag Academy graduated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a meeting next Wednesday. Uh -huh. Fun, fun. And you got nominated okay. while you weren't here to yeah. continue that. Again. Yeah. All right. I figure you're just getting the groove of it. Yeah. Is it true that the collaborative is like seriously over budget? Um, well. Like two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars over budget? Maybe. They have all that, that DMH uh -huh. money. You got tons of DMH money. I don't know what that is. They have they, have, they DYS provide money. A, a DYS, <laughs> that's what I mean, DYS. They provide all the education and all the like children's lockups and group homes and detentions in the state. It's a huge. It was, when they first got it, it was like so. it was like a fifty million dollar contract. Although those children and de being detained is the numbers going down, but still, so that may may have been a budget issue. But anyway, uh, principal's report. Okay, so I was hoping um, to be able to present you with our NWEA scores uh, tonight, but we haven't completely finished all of them yet. We've been really busy here at Conway Grammar School, so I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i do a grid and I'll email you the summer and present it in the fall. Um, um, the, the ones that I have looked at are showing some nice growth, so 
Uh, we had our engineering day today, which was a great success. Michael was here, and um, all of the classes were working on um, projects all day. So um, sixth grade was working on creating something to lift an egg with robotics, like lift an egg up to the <coughs> desk and bring it back down again. Without breaking it? Yeah, without breaking it. And fifth grade was working on um, like an L of, uh, escalator type of thing for their egg. And fourth grade was working on a car to transport the egg, all with robotics. John Heffernan brought in, and he was just, he was fab, it, 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 totally instrumental in this day. Um, that guy gives so much to this town. Yeah, uh, totally. I mean, I don't know he if really people really does. realize that. Yeah. that uh, yeah. Parks and Rec, he actually like takes his own lawn tractor and his own truck yeah. down there. Yeah. And he's like, the stuff that he does. He, he's great. been great to come with Grammar School since, in the two years and that I've been, been here. He's been trying to get robotics in here since. He's yeah, looking for a substitute for him, but his park and rec, his kids are getting out. He's like, yeah. tell, tell school, can we put it out there, get, get someone to take my place? I've been doing yeah. it for six years. But then at the end of the day, um, the fire truck came, Chief Baker came with the fire truck, and first in uh, kindergarten had um, made, you know, cushions for the egg to drop, and Chief Baker dropped all of the eggs one at a time in their little holders from the top of the fire truck and all the kids cheered and so the kindergarten and first grade created that and that was that was really special that was great and did, uh, it, did any not break we had a ton that mm -hmm. didn't break wow that did break. yeah but little engineers mm -hmm. cool. they were cute awesome the different ways that they did them and their thinking and we just have really smart great kids we really have great kids That's and they're awesome. watching their thinking throughout the day and how they were building things and um so that was a great day. Tomorrow we're going to be showing screenagers. Um, I put a synopsis here for you um, to fifth and sixth grade students. Um, I was going to miss it, darn. Just about the. Um, we don't have. A, I think we have two parents in fifth grade coming. I, I, we've been asking parents to do a lot during the day. I didn't really try to be cognizant of that. Um, so I, I think it's fine for the kids to watch it alone. Oh, yeah. Can I Google it? No, because you have to. It's pretty expensive, and you only get a certain number of clicks. On. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, it's something you might want to present to yeah. the schools that you're working yeah. in. It's really good. It's about Definitely. a, they maybe a little bit higher for um, fifth grade, but we thought we'd... we'd they showed it at Frontier there. last week, and I just uh, the irony of all, all the kids were waiting for rides and not see their, just sitting outside the auditorium where it was being shown on their machines just like it's a whole row of like 10 kids on their devices leading into the movie about devices mm -hmm. yeah. it talks about how it changes your brain it totally you know, and, and it really um, so we're going to show it tomorrow at nine and then there's a panel of high school kids who will be answering questions and doing dialogue with our kids so that's going to be tomorrow that's awesome too yeah um kindergarten visiting day was great um right now we have 14 students signed up for kindergarten and two possible school choice students coming in, in addition to the 14 that we have. And there's room for the ones that come out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There definitely is room for the, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Pre-K, we have actually 18 students signed up for pre-K. Not yeah. every day, but um, a total of 18 students. So, um, And most of those kiddos are, I think all, all but two maybe are kind of like kids. So Population explosion. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's great. Um, Patty talked about the lunch overdue balances. Our kids, sixth graders went to Frontier Step Up Day, which was great. They enjoyed themselves. And the high majority of our kids are going to Frontier next year. Unlike last year, we had kids going to four different schools. So mm -hmm. the high majority are going to Frontier this year. And um, so we've had a great year here at County Grammar School. It's a great place. It's a great place to be. It's really a principal's dream. So thank you. Thank you for this position. <laughs> I love it. Everyone here. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, no superintendent, just Lynn Center report? No, just a reminder um, that there is a meeting Monday, uh, the 18th, uh, at Frontier Regional to discuss <coughs> the interim uh, superintendent position. I think that's Darius' interview, meetings. right? Yeah. Is it, he's interviewing at 6 o'clock. A public right? interview. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And it's 6.56. Mm -hmm.